Uncovering the power of sound. Sound and creation. It is said that sound is the origin of creation. In many ancient scriptures sound appears as the first element, the sacred original sound of the universe or OM, from which everything came forth. There is reasonable scientific evidence that proves that sound waves were somehow responsible for the creation of the universe. The first sound ever was the sound of the Big Bang, followed by infinite sound waves expanding through the primordial space to create the universe's structure. If we look at the Bible and Hindu Vedas creation myths, both mystics of West and East, the universe and everything in it, including us, is a result of infinite combinations of sound patterns which created matter. Creation myths can often convey profound truths, either symbolically or in literal sense. In fact modern new creation theories often blend science and spirituality together. Is it really that difficult to believe, that ultimately, life was created by waveforms, with precise geometric structure and symmetry and that it is currently being sustained and kept together by vibrations and sound frequencies? The law of nature states that everything has a vibration. Einstein with his theory of relativity proved that all matter is energy and therefore nothing in the universe is still. Everything in nature is vibrating, every single living and non-living thing in this universe has a resonance, or a frequency at which it vibrates. There is no solidity in the universe. The entire material world is nothing but vibration. Sound manipulates matter. Dr. Hans Jenny, the scientist who created the term somatics, the study of visible sound vibrations, demonstrated, in his fascinating experiment bringing matter to life, how sound vibration is a driving force that can create and shape everything. He conducted experiments where powders, liquids and pastes, when excited by pure tones, would form orderly patterns that mirrored those found in nature, showing that there is a relationship between sound and form, and that matter is in fact, a physical manifestation of vibration. And so, we can hypothesize how, at the beginning of time, matter took shape because of sound. Cymatics is still in its infancy, but in future, it will help us understand the effects of sound vibrations on everything around us. To realize how powerful sound is, we only have to think about how an opera singer can shatter a glass with his or her voice. To shatter a glass, the singer's voice frequency needs to match the resonant frequency of the glass. The human voice is indeed powerful, it is also the oldest form of sound healing. Chanting, reciting a mantra, singing, are all ancient techniques, used to foster healing and for soothing the mind. Sound can also be made visible with cymatics imagery, which are reminiscence of sacred mandala and structure of cells and organisms. When we observe the work of Dr. Hans Jenny we clearly see how sound creates geometric patterns. These patterns can be found everywhere in nature. In a pine cone, in a shell, in a snowflake and even in the spiral shape of galaxies. They are present in art and architecture too. All forms of life derive from these sacred patterns. They are called sacred geometry because they are the patterns by which creation manifests. Sound creates and destroys. Cancer researchers have been able to destroy cancer cells, using only sound waves at different frequencies, through the use of focused ultrasound. Anthony Holland, in his TEDx talk shows, how two input frequencies, between 1000 Hz to 3000 Hz, one high, one low, shatter leukemia cells as they become vulnerable to those frequencies. 
The focused ultrasound foundation has successfully treated Parkinson's disease and is currently researching the application of focused ultrasound to treat a variety of medical conditions and ultimately the adoption of such technology as standard medical care. In the Bible there is the story of the fall of the walls of Jericho. Here, thousands of Israelites marched around the majestic city walls for seven days, blowing their horns and roaring in unison, under very specific instructions, till the walls fell down. Again, we are looking at the power that sound has, to interact and alter the molecular structure of an object. To understand the reality of the destructive consequences of acoustic resonance, we only have to think again, about the singer shattering the glass, as previously mentioned. In ancient Greece, most philosophers thought of the sound of music as therapeutic and used it regularly to treat many illnesses, from depression to mental illness. In many primitive cultures, music was a part of everyday life and used to connect to spirit in healing rituals. Evidence of early sound therapy is present in pretty much every civilization, from the Sumerians in Mesopotamia to the Egyptians and Greeks, to the Europeans during the Middle Ages, Renaissance, and Baroque. So, we can see how sound is being used in conventional medicine, through the use of inaudible frequencies, like ultrasounds and infrasounds. And in alternative medicine, through the use of audible frequencies such as tuning forks, voice, singing bowls, gongs, etc. Sound was the medicine of our past and it's set to become the medicine of our future. Sound healing with intent. An important factor in the application of sound healing however, is intent. An example of how intent is the consciousness encoded into the sound, can be seen in Greg Braden's documentary, in which he shows the tumor of a cancer patient, shrinking and disappearing in a few minutes, through the use of a mantra, chanted by trained practitioners at the Medicineless Hospital in China. Their genuine intent of course was to restore the patient to health. Thus, the formula coined by Jonathan Goldman, frequency plus intent equals healing. Sound can levitate objects. Scientists today have already demonstrated that sound vibration can levitate small objects by suspending them in a medium, using frequency pressure from intense sound waves. If we look at our history we see various incidents of this lost technology where sound was used to levitate objects. There is the story, reported in his diary by a Swedish doctor, Dr. Jarl in 1939, where Tibetan monks were able to levitate huge stones through the power of sound, by chanting a mantra and using certain instruments placed at a specific distance. There is the mystery surrounding the construction of Coral Castle in Florida by Edward Lead Scalman, where he built the entire site by himself, by lifting massive blocks, single-handedly and with no machinery. I know the secrets of the people who built the pyramids he claimed, and what about the pyramids? An amazing accomplishment of mathematical precision and engineering. Made with huge granite blocks, sourced from a quarry located 500 miles away and assembled with such precision, that it is impossible to fathom how ancient Egyptians would have managed without modern tools or technology. Especially if we consider that, we haven't been able to reproduce it today, even with our most advanced technology. A mystery. Just like the large quartz basins scattered around the pyramids, all with the same diameter and curvature and modular in nature, which suggest, they were most probably placed together all around the pyramids, before they were moved by the Egyptian authorities to display for tourists. The fact that they are made of quartz and piezoelectric crystals, just like the pyramids, suggest that they were used to amplify acoustic waves, like a modern speaker, 
and not for ritual sacrifices, as originally believed, since no trace of blood has ever been found and no other plausible explanations have been given so far. Even nowadays speakers that produce high-frequency sounds, use piezoelectric transducers, instead of the traditional magnetic coil. And we all know that a stereo speaker can cause objects to vibrate and sometimes even break. So it follows that levitation is also possible. Also, if we look at Dr. Yal experience at the Tibetan monastery, previously mentioned, he talks about specific instruments, placed at specific distances from the mountain cliff where the big stone was going to be moved to. He also mentioned a huge concave polished slab of rock, shaped like a bowl or a basin, on top of which the big stone was placed, before it started to levitate towards the cliff. Again a reference about a basin or an ancient speaker. Lidskalnan also used a device that looked like a concave basin, to build his coral castle all by himself. A device that to this day no one knows what it was used for. Abdul Hassan al-Masudi, who was a 10th century Arab historian, wrote about 30 books on the history of the world. In one of these books there is a passage, where he talks about how the pyramids were built and how the huge stones were transported. He wrote that the stones were struck with a metal rod which would make them levitate along a path fenced with metal poles. The metal rod is an interesting artifact. In the Egyptian hieroglyphics we often see pharaohs and priests carrying these rods or scepters. They were called with scepters, which looked very much like tuning forks. We all know the vibrations of the two tines of the tuning fork produce movement of surrounding air molecules. So, why can't we hypothesize that these rods were indeed used to levitate objects through vibrations and frequencies? We can see how the pyramids and many other megalithic structures and sites, built by ancient civilizations around the world, could have been put in place, with advanced knowledge of vibrational physics, still unknown to us today. Of course, we can assume that, none of these stories and papers are real and were told or written by people, with a flair for fantastical tales. However there are far too many anecdotes, dotted all throughout our history, which point to an advanced technology of gravity manipulation through sound to just dismiss them as not real. Sound and Fire Sound can be used as a fire extinguisher. How? We just have to remember that sound is a pressure wave that oscillates between high and low pressure. This oscillation creates a vacuum that can remove the oxygen from the air molecules. And if there is no oxygen there is no fire. Sound for cleaning Ultrasonic cleaning already exists and it is used to clean many different objects, from jewelry, to watches, tools, dental and surgical instruments, coins, firearms, industrial parts and electronic equipment. Also, it has already been tested in various hospitals to kill bacteria and other pathogens. It works by creating cavitation, a phenomenon in which rapid changes of sound pressure in a liquid lead to the formation of small bubbles or cavities, which then expand and implode, generating energy which dislodges the contaminants. Sound and Light Cavitation is also responsible for sonoluminescence, the emission of short bursts of light, from imploding bubbles in a liquid, when excited by sound. It is a way to turn sound energy into light. Sound gives power. It can be used to power up any electronic devices wirelessly, 
by harnessing the energy created by ultrasonic sound vibrations, or to simply put it, sound moving through air particles which converts to wireless electricity. It works by using a transmitter, much like a speaker, to emit ultrasound beams to a receiver set in alignment with it. And, unlike other sources of power it produces no electromagnetic radiation, making it completely safe. There is also says a technology or sound amplification by stimulated emission of radiation which offers many potential practical uses. It is the sonic equivalent of laser, but instead of light waves it uses sound waves, and instead of photons it uses phonons. These technologies are still in its infancy but they are set to revolutionize the way we use power and energy. Sadly there are already sonic and ultrasonic weapons, readily available that use sound to injure, disorientate or even kill. They are extremely powerful sound waves, that can destroy the eardrums and cause severe pain, from mild brain damage to hearing loss. So, we can see how sound will be the most used technology of the future. It is a truly amazing, mysterious and versatile medium. A lost technology, now rediscovered and ready to be harnessed again. We hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.